Hey guys, it's Sebastian from Ask Sebi, and today we are going to talk about rumors related to the Marriott and SPG loyalty program, so the new one that's going to launch. Since today is very text heavy, I figured that Stickman Sebi is a better solution than normal Sebi. Just to start from the very beginning, because I do know some people might not know what I'm talking about, and just to provide a bit more context, Marriott acquired SPG back in 2016. Marriott paid $13 billion for SPG, and one of the main goals was to lower the technology platform cost of both owners. So instead of having two platforms, having one. With all of this information, we knew that the programs were eventually going to get merged. The big question though, was when it was going to happen. Looking at a few other statements, they expected the merge to happen in 2018. For people in the travel as well as the credit card community, the main thing that we're concerned with is firstly signup bonuses, as well as earning these points and using them. With signup bonuses, the main issue was whether certain cards like the SPG card or the SPG business cards were going to disappear, and same thing for the Marriott cards. One good thing here though is that Marriott as well as SPG, so the merged brand, was going to keep issuing cards from both American Express as well as Chase. Chase was going to get the consumer cards as well as the premium consumer cards, while American Express was going to take the super premium cards and also the business cards. We also did an analysis of this in a prior video, talking about which cards are likely to go away given these terms. Again, the main issue here is whether certain cards were going to disappear, or whether all of them were going to disappear and new cards were going to be issued from a new program. About two weeks ago, US credit card guides talked about the SPG site going away on August 1st. Initially, I was going to put this in one of the roundup videos, but I want to get a bit more information first just because it didn't seem that confirmed yet. The screenshots he has on the blog post are from Flyer T, which is the Flyer Talk equivalent for China. Feel free to pause the video if you want to keep reading through this. Two days ago, someone on Flyer Talk leaked additional comments about the new program. One of the big ones being that there's going to be five different levels for status. A few hours after that, we got additional information from a different source. Looking at this one, a few of the takeaways are that the status is not really finalized yet in terms of the name. So they still have Platinum 50, Platinum 75, and 100 as the working names. It looks like that there's going to be a spend requirement for any level above silver. So again, gold, as well as all three levels of Platinum. If the spend level is not reached, but the Knights are, the status is going to be at the appropriate level based on the spend. If you have gold status or the lowest tier of platinum status, then your upgrades are going to be limited to preferred rooms, concierge floors, as well as higher floors and corner rooms. The big key point here is that suites will no longer be an option. So if you were previously a Marriott Gold member, you could still get upgraded to suites. This seems pretty consistent with SPG, where technically with SPG Gold, they usually don't upgrade you to suites. It looks like lounge access is going to be for platinum and up, and same thing for free breakfast at resorts. There's also a bunch of potential changes to lifetime status, but I feel like most people here are probably not really concerned with that, so again, feel free to read through this yourself. The biggest one, and the one that I hope is really not true, is that Marriott is going to move towards dynamic award pricing. So we've seen Hilton do the same thing. The benefit is that they can charge points based off the hotel room cost at the time of booking. Most brands typically market this as better for the consumer, but again, if you're someone who spends the time researching and who wants to find the best deal for their points, this is a really bad change. A good example of this would be during the Super Bowl. So let's say it's still based off points. If you were going during a normal time or during the Super Bowl, it's still going to cost you the same amount of points. Let's say 30,000. Using the dynamic pricing though, during the low season, it might be 20,000 points, but during the Super Bowl, it might be something like 100,000 points. Again, I'm a pretty big fan of categories just because they allow you to get outsized value when the prices are pretty crazy. As a reminder, not all of this is necessarily going to be implemented. So they could be just discussing a lot of different things and seeing which ones make sense. With all of this, I'm already kind of curious what's going to happen with American Express Platinum. So you typically get gold status for SPG and Marriott. The good thing being that you can access the lounge and you get free breakfast with Marriott gold status. So again, given these new tiers, given how everything's going to work, what will be the new status? Will it stay gold or will we get platinum as the default? Another thing too is that given that American Express is supposed to launch the super premium card, will we see status that is significantly higher? So we have seen that with Hilton already, where the Hilton Aspire card gives you the top tier status, so it gives you diamond status. So here, I would not be surprised if they launch a new card and it gives you Platinum 75. 
Hopping back onto the rumor train, it looks like they have an announcement on April 16th, starting at 4pm. In a sense, I think this is pretty good given the August end date for the program or for the merge to happen, but again, I kind of wish they did it a bit earlier just because August is pretty close. The final piece of all of this is that on one mile at a time, one of Lucky's readers mentioned that they talked to SPG and that they heard that the program for transferring to airlines is going to be discontinued on April 16th. There's a lot of reasons to think that this is not really true and not going to happen, but again, it's just something being discussed, so we really don't know. As a side note, most frontline reps are not that knowledgeable about their products or about any of the limitations from benefits and stuff like that, so something to consider there. So given all of this information, I think the most actionable stuff are going to be around whether you want to transfer your points and whether there are any other specific cards that you want to grab before this merger happens. In terms of transferring points, I don't really think it makes sense. Again, Lucky had a pretty good argument for it, so I'd read through it if you want. One of the big reasons is I think it's really going to hurt Marriott's brand if they did something like this, and again, it's not really a good way to launch a new program. If you still want to transfer your points out though, that's obviously fine. I think it really depends on what airlines are looking to fly. So for a lot of people, Japan Airlines, so JAL, or Emirates are going to be very good transfer partners. Alaska is also pretty good if you want flexibility. It depends on you, but again, there's some non-optimal ones as well. United or American Airlines are programs that I wouldn't transfer to because it doesn't really make sense. If you are going to transfer, try to transfer to a program that American Express as well as Chase doesn't directly transfer to, and that's kind of my rationale for JAL. The next part of all of this is whether there are any cards you should get before a changeover happens. The main reason being that you want to grab a sign-up bonus before the card disappears, otherwise you're losing out on that sign-up bonus because there's no other way you'll ever get that again. My belief is that once they launch that new program, all of those cards are going to be considered new products just because they're going to work fundamentally very differently than the prior cards. On a side note, if you are looking to apply for new cards, especially if you are under 524 and you're trying to figure out what strategy makes sense, feel free to fill out a consultation on our website, that way we can talk about strategy. We've kind of seen this with American Express with the Hilton program, so people who previously had the Surpass card, which was upgraded to the Ascends card by a Force upgrade, and it was pretty much exactly the same product, so if you had the Surpass card and you cancelled it, you could actually have signed up for the Ascends card and gotten that sign-up bonus again. Given Marriott's statements in the past, I think the most endangered cards are going to be the Marriott Business card, as well as the SPG Personal card. Again, you can watch that speculation for a bit more details, but my guess, and again, I might be completely wrong, we really don't know, is that the Marriott Personal card will be converted to a Chase Inc. Preferred card. I also wouldn't be surprised if the SPG Personal card got converted to an Everyday Preferred card. The main reason for this is because if you look at the annual fee, it seems pretty consistent, and again, I don't think too many people would be concerned about it. Alternatively, they could also trade the portfolios, but again, even if that happens, you're going to have the ability to cancel the card before that occurs. So again, we saw this with the City Hilton cards, where you had the ability to cancel the card. In terms of cards, I think a lot of it is going to depend on whether you want to get specific sign-up bonuses before the card is gone. So again, the IHG card that we talked about in the past a lot recently, Technically, if you applied for it, then you got one extra bonus that other people would otherwise not be able to get because they can't apply for that old card anymore. So again, imagine if you had two people, one person applied for the old card as well as the new card, and one person just applied for the new card. The person on top is grandfathered in for that old card. Yes, the free night doesn't work as well as before, but the rest of the perks, the annual fee, it's still locked in. Overall, it's been a pretty interesting two days, and again, there's a lot of information. If you want to stay in the know, my recommendation would be to read Flyer Talk because that's where most of the discussion is happening. So I hope that was helpful, and let me know if you guys have any questions. My question for you guys is what do you think is going on with the program? Do you think these changes are good, bad? Let me know in the comments down below. Or also, do you think any of these cards are going to disappear? Whether status is going to be affected? Pretty much anything that we talked about. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, it really helps us out. And if you know anyone else who'd benefit from what we just talked about, feel free to share this video with them because it's probably going to help them out. But otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.